yang akan show dari Mabit Bidya Sekolah This is the election This is the election You will now show the Bidya Sekolah Make sure that you are not going to be able to find the Bidya on the front of the camera I want to thank you for the sushi the dance band chapters, all the dance band chapters, I want to thank you for this. I cannot mention you very much, but you all have done very well. Thank you very much. I will put a lot of money. So those who are unable to do so, particularly those of you in the dance floor, 
you cannot go to the IEC and, and uh, go to scrutinize my documents that are presented, including my asset declaration. So I give you opportunity to see what is contained in my, in my declaration. So it is good practice, and I want to encourage everybody, and I in fact ask President Baru to do so. The reason why I've done it is that you in the diaspora can have information of what is contained in my asset declaration because the IEC will not make it public. And you cannot go to the IEC to verify whether or not Mr. Dabo has made, or what declarations Mr. Dabo has made of his assets. And you now have the opportunity of knowing how many planted properties I have as at the date of my nomination. You also have now have the opportunity of knowing what my bank balances are as at the date of my nomination. So if you elect me president, and then I make a declaration of assets at the time I leave office, you will be able to know whether I have used my office to enrich myself or not. So you will have to Another question we have from Musa Mani is, is diaspora voting part of your agenda as a president of the government? Diaspora voting has always been UDP's agenda. Uh, when Gabriel Roberts was chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission, UDP pushed for diaspora voting. Because we know that there's a provision in the election that authorizes the Independent Electoral Commission to make regulations for the registration of voters in foreign lands. And we, we are, as we, we are pushing the IEC to do so. In fact, efforts have started to introduce diaspora voting then. But I guess the government then felt that with the diaspora voting, they are likely to be thrown out of, to be voted out of office. And then they came up with all sorts of excuses. How do you determine which country should be given the privilege? How do you determine uh, the mode of, of conducting the, the, the elections? All sorts of arguments. And the cost, the cost element was also brought in. But my argument was that investing in democracy is really investing in the progress of the country. So you can invest as many millions as possible to ensure that the diaspora votes. Because in that way, you are, you are investing in democracy. You are not only investing in democracy, but you are also giving people who contribute immensely to the economy of this country. You're giving them an opportunity to have a say in who should be the president of the country, in who should manage the funds that they are remitted to this country. And that has always been the position of the United Democratic Party and uh, will continue to be the position of the Democratic, United Democratic Party. When we win, because, because my organizing secretary doesn't want me to use the word if, <laughs> when we win in December, we can be sure that this, that this, this constitution that guarantees diaspora voting, UDP will bring it back to the National Assembly and will make sure that it passes all the trash codes, the constitutional trash codes, so that the people in diaspora will have a right to vote. Uh, yeah, so the next question from Moro Sisa was going to be relevant if it came an hour earlier. But now that we know that you are not going to be disqualified, I think we can just jump in. Uh, because he was asking if you, you were going to accept it if you were not qualified to take part in the election. I don't know if you want to answer that. No, it's not relevant. It's not relevant. So, so this one from E.B. Sanyu says, how is your government going to invest in Jahali Pacha to see that every household can afford a decent living? I have stated it out in our CM that UDP government will try to abide by the Maputo Declaration, that is to say by having 10% of its budget, national budget, uh, dedicated to agriculture. And of course, uh, in doing so, Jahal Pacha will be uh, an area that, uh, the that the government will invest in. 
And we want to not only increase rice production in Kenya, but we also want to make sure that, that the rice cultivating that is the end of the is a is process, is process so that we have we have a, a value added to it and we can also by this also target every year that we produce uh, such a quantity of a uh, of rice which will match you know, a percentage of rice we can put so that we will reduce our rice importation gradually and we, we want to by the end of the fifth year of our government, that this government, that this country does not import rice. Jahal Pajar and other areas in the CRR and also in the Nyam and also in the LRR, now the rice going in here to make sure that, that rice is grown in this area in abundance so that the household people in this community will have enough rice at their disposal to feed themselves. Um, the next one we have is not really a question, but it's asking uh, if we at the UDP will call on all of the uh, other parties and independent candidates that have been disqualified to join us and have a And it is from Mohammed Jan. Mr. Jano, it is in the thinking of the UDP to ask other parties whether disqualified independent and independent candidates, those who have withdrawn, and parties that have not won nomination and all others, we are going to ask them to join the United Democratic Party to come and work with us. After all, we have a common agenda, and that common agenda is to put in place a government that is responsible, a government that will address the problems of the government people. I think we share the same values, same governance values we share the same, so there should not be any problem of this party really uh, agreeing to work with us. And I am using this medium to appeal to all the disqualified candidates to come and work with the United Democratic Party. I want to say that I have started talking to some of the parties even before today and we will continue those steps because we believe in unity lies our strength. And uh, I don't know how great it is. This man who I understand is sitting on two hundred and seven million dollars. I don't know how to it is. And that's that is what is in the myself declaration. I don't know whether it is true or not. But that is what I've been doing. I thought I did say two million seven hundred thousand or what? Or two hundred and seventy thousand, but they said two hundred and seven million. I don't know. Whatever amount of money is different, it is necessary that we have a common and strong united front to really fight against this evil axis. We have to do so. And I'll continue to talk to people. Thank you very much. Uh, Salvo Conte also asked a question about the diaspora franchise, but you have already answered that. Um, we will um, we will go to the next government, uh, to the next question from Darling Gifan which asks, what will a UDP government do in fighting against corruption? I believe in our five-point agenda, uh, the introduction, uh, we say we are going to talk, embark on reforms, and that our government will fight corruption. We will not condone corruption in any form. And that the anti-corruption tribunal will be staffed with competent people, men of integrity. And there will be no sacred cause. And indeed, the United Democratic Party finds corruption unacceptable, it certainly can certainly be seen from the attitude or actions 
taken by the mayor of country municipality because he is implementing and put in place the policies of the United Democratic Party, how we handle this situation. When it became clear that people in that institution were involved in uh, corrupt practices, he took swift action. Although his actions were in some way being blocked by those people who claim to be anti-corruption agents of this country. But they didn't show example by that. So you can see from what we have, what has been done by KMC, that our government will be a government that will not tolerate corruption in this country. And because of our desire to fight against corruption, that is why I have also made public the assets I have as a date, so that in, if you elect me, at the end of my tenure, you now, you now again have an opportunity to scrutinize another declaration. And then the, if the results of that scrutiny, if really it turns out that I have millions and millions, you know, and uh, uh, properties all over, then you can only conclude that our fight, our promise to fight against corruption, it was not, was not, was not true. This is to create the benchmark, say the example, the bar, that we will fight corruption, and this is to assure as government people that we are going to fight corruption. That is why I have taken the extraordinary step of making my assets uh, available to the entire public. So, um, we will go with our final two questions. Uh, the, the second to last one asks, what does the UDP government have for madrasas and Arabic students? Uh, thank you. Uh, again, if you have chance to look at our five-point agenda on the education sector, we have addressed this of madrasas. We do not believe that uh, the attention being given to conventional schools, the Western schools, we do not believe that the attention being given to them uh, is, uh, is one that is so deserving as to exclude the madrasas. And we are not only including the madrasas, but we are also including the majlises. Because they are also centers of learning. They are also, I mean, informal educational institutions. In fact, in the madrasas, sometimes, if I'm not sometimes, always, fees are paid to those operating the madrasas. But the, the majors, no fees are paid to them. I have confidence in uh, uh, Serene Ibrahim Amane. I take two of my kids to him. Please. He feeds them. When they are sick, he takes care of them. And in these days, nobody takes any of these kids to the farm to go and, to, to go and uh, work on the farms. Nobody does that now. If that was done in the days that my father was going to the mall, was going to the margins, or my brother was going to the margins, not now. So I believe that these people should also have some kind of subvention. In fact, uh, through informal discussions with uh, Mr. San, I think we are traveling from Karantaba in the returning home, and we are discussing the general affair of the country. And one thing that uh, came out of his mouth, but I think we should be thinking of social budget. Of course, they are the people of finance, they know what social budget is. And I don't think we are a want of men and women in the United Democratic Party who can really formulate good policies on social budgeting and really make it one that is beneficial to the country. So madrasas, they're really going to uh, is in the center of our policy, and uh, just as we give the government gives subventions to non-government schools, we think we should be giving subventions to the madrasas, and this we are going to do, and also to assist, and also to assist all the majlis in this country that we are going to do that. We will rather go to parliament with an uh, 
SAP to help those institutions that go to the parliament with as SAP to really take care of uh, travels on our trans travels that have taken place and you want to cover up yourself. That will not be good. So um, the last question we have from John Mendy is my question is with the reoccurrence of military coups in West Africa. What will a UDP government do to stop military coups and also um, improve the service delivery of the military service? Well, what we will do to stop military coups? Is it in Africa? Or in in West Africa. Yeah. Well, well, in West Africa, no. uh, I certainly cannot say that uh, uh, we'll put play, we'll put measures in place that will prevent military coups in a country X. But certainly, for the Gambia, we certainly can put measures in place. The causes of military coups is what we will avoid. I think that way there will be no military takeover. But what causes military coups? Tribalism, corruption, nepotism, you know, arrogance, you know, self perpetuation in office. These are things that cause military coups. And we will not do that in this country. So you can, uh, so that is one thing that, that you, Mr. Mendy, I can speak for, for us in the Gambia UDP government will ensure that nothing happens that will give the military any reason to think of a coup. Now, as far as the delivery, service, do you know service delivery? Yes, yes, military. Yeah? But I do not know what you mean by service delivery, but really, we are very concerned about the welfare of the military. Uh, I find it heartbreaking. I find it really disheartening that a man can serve in the armed forces of the Gambia for 35 years. He quits the army. He does not have a home to live in. He cannot even afford rent. He ends up being a security guard. I find that very disheartening. So, also, and the same thing applies to the, to the members of the Gambia. In fact, the security in general. So for us, the welfare of these service people, whether in the military, whether in the police, whether in the immigration, whether in the prisons, we have it there, we have to take care of them. So that in their own age, they will be a decent life. Some military officers cannot afford to pay school fees for their kids. I know that as a fact. Should that happen? And we want to make sure that uh, the uh, security service of this country uh, are really given their due. They are treated well. And because uh, we cannot really arm people with guns to be on sentry duties at the uh, strategic and sensitive position of the locations, and yet not take care of them. Because uh, with their weapons, they can be I mean, uh, threatened to, threat to the nation. So we will look after the military, not only the military, but all the security outfits of this country, so that they will be proud to say that I served in the Gambia Police Force. Or I serve in the Gambia Armed Forces. We want them to do so. We want that when they leave, they will leave like any person. So that's what we are going to do for them. Yes, um, on that note, I'd like to thank everyone for the questions that they've sent in and also the people that have been watching us on the Party Leaders um, official Facebook page and also other mediums that are present here today. Um, we will go on to the third phase of the program, which is the presentation that is supposed to be done by the defenders for the chapters and also individuals that are here to join us. Um, on that note, I'll, I'll also... Do you have so that we can show? Because we don't want to push this Yes. Um, good evening, once again. Uh, we we like to thank you all for coming. And uh, um, give special thanks to 
our various diaspora chapters who are present here with us today. Uh, this is uh, the third phase of this interaction today uh, with the party leader. Now, today is a very huge day for, for all of us, for the United Democratic Party and uh, for, for the Gambia at large. Uh, we've just received news that our party leader is duly nominated. His nomination is duly confirmed to be the uh, candidate for the United Democratic Party for the upcoming uh, uh, December elections. So that is a great news. Uh, but we want to greet this news with a huge contribution from the diaspora. Um, today, um, we are going to have uh, seven chapters of the diaspora who are going to uh, make a donation uh, to the campaign uh, for the 2021 elections. Um, we in the diaspora have uh, set a target and uh, we had a plan and uh, we've executed our plan. Um, I think I have mentioned in the, one of my previous interviews that uh, the United Democratic Party diaspora is going to contribute nothing less than $20 million in this campaign. Uh, and so far, we are on track. As I have said, today we are going to present nothing less than $7 million. And, um, but also, we've already contributed, already contributed more than $5 million uh, to date, to this campaign. Now, this is possible through the visionary leadership of our party leader, uh, Honorable uh, Alaji Hussein Nukuna Adabo. Uh, you know, leadership, I always tell people, is vision. When you have vision, it makes things more easier. Uh, the idea of UDP diaspora chapters, as he mentioned earlier, came up way back in 1997. And I think for some of the people then, if you tell anybody then that down the line, 25 years later, the UDP diaspora chapters will set up a record that cannot be compared to any, uh, you will be surprised. But this is possible because of the trust and the confidence we had in our leadership. And uh, I will have to confess here today, there is one particular chapter that I was not even aware of. You know, usually I will uh, initiate, for example, there is Gambians, there are Gambians in Qatar, I will tell somebody, our secretary, can you get to this guy, get a number and say, hey, can you guys establish chapters for us? But this is not the case this time around. Um, and I think this is basically because Gambian people, majority of the Gambian people, I can say 75% of the Gambian people have come to believe and have trust in the leadership of Alaji Hussein Udam. And I believe that their problems can only be solved by the United Democratic Party. The Gambian diaspora believe in a leadership that is mature, that is honest, that is transparent, and that is unified. And that is what we've seen in Alaji Hussein Udam. Um, without uh, taking much of your time, uh, we will start our presentations. As I've mentioned, there is one particular chapter that I was not even aware of. Somebody just brought this to me and said, your folks in Qatar, you have a chapter in Qatar, and this is their contribution. And this is what has been happening all around. Right now, the UDP diaspora, I can proudly say that we have chapters all over the world. Every part of the world, we have chapters. And thank you, Paul Senu. This is possible because of your leadership. You have inspired us. You have motivated us. You have shown us that 
true honesty and transparency and commitment, anything is possible. We are on your footsteps, and this is a road that we are going to follow until that do us not as bad as, as, as they say. Um, as I said, without much further ado, I will call on uh, our diaspora secretary, who is Mr. Tom Bonsedi, to, to present uh, uh, $28,000 from our folks in Qatar. Dallas, Dallas is in our folks in Qatar. <laughs> Um, thank you, party leader, and once again, congratulations for this nomination. Um, the Qatar chapter is here by donating $28,000. It's a new chapter, and there are, there are only a few of them. But I think it's a show of um, um, courage and um, how determined they are in giving their contribution towards this um, election. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Sedi. Thank you, thank you, Okay. Thank you, Mr. 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 Sedi. Uh, now, now we we call on to our. Chapter in the in the United one of our chapters in the United States that is Ohio Michigan chapter. Uh, who's uh, chairperson Ali Udabo is here. Also, we have Papa Sam. Now, I'll have to do this. Here is a gentleman. Can you stand up, please, Papa? You know, this is the guy who is behind. I'm voting. UDP 2021. Since he joined the United Democratic Party, I cannot tell you how committed he is to the, uh, the, the ideals of the United Democratic Party. Uh, we talk every day. Papa, I want to acknowledge you and I want to thank you so much. So you can come ahead and present your. your, 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 your. Decided um, we put something together and bring it, and uh, we were able to put a total of fifty thousand dollars together. 
to, to donate to the UDP on behalf of our chapter. By the way, our chapter is not even a year old. It's a very young chapter. We're still mobilizing, but uh, that's no reason to lag behind. We're trying to put a little bit together and share with the party so that the agenda can move. Uh, we UDP. Thank you. So, in addition to the fifty thousand dollars is that is uh, that was contributed by the Ohio Michigan chapter. Our folks from that chapter has already had uh, a, a great uh, present for the UDP TV and media that they are going to hand over to the party leader as well. Thank you, Professor. Mr. C.D. Davo, who is a resident of Kansas in the United States, uh, to make his presentation. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, and I congratulate you on your nomination. Thank you. Excuse me. I think among you all, I have been here since 31st of uh, May, and I was opportune to join these people on their tour to the province. First and second day, I came back. The first day, I ate my half bread with butter and a cup of tea. I joined them all the way to Jirungu. I did not take any shower. I did not eat anything until 9 p.m. that very night. <laughs> and I joined these ladies in this yellow yellow van. Everybody sweating. They were shouting, clapping, laughing. I could not believe it. If you pay me $5,000 is that day, a day, I would not go. <laughs> I went to Jirungu. I did not eat anything since my half loaf of bread until 9 p.m. And I was sitting down, I saw these ladies cooking. And I was like, hey, if I don't tell myself, I don't report myself, I will not eat. Please give me something to eat. That was like 9 p.m. No shower. I went to bed. I could not sleep. My first night in that house, that bed. So I don't know how. I went to bed around 5 a.m. I could not sleep. In the morning, I got up to pray. 
I started, I said, Allah, but somebody knocked my door. We are, we are leaving, we are leaving. I was like, let me, let me go and pray home. You know? yeah. So no sour, nothing. No prayer. So, yeah, nothing, absolutely. So after that, I realized that our effort is to complement the great effort on the ground. We are just complimenting them. I could not have done it. And nobody would pay me, nobody would pay me 10,000 a day to join that trip. If they are able to do that, I want all of you to know we are just complimenting their efforts. Beyond that also, what I wanted to say is we are not here on vacation. I think if we are here to work, let us not see it as vacation. The diaspora, let us come up with something. We have something, we have something I refer it to as a comparative advantage over NPP. They cannot have a diaspora this full of a room. They cannot. So we, we have that. Let us not count how many times I have been seen with Mr. Dabo, the party leader. Let us look outward, not inward. Let us sit down and see what we can do to help the party. I was thinking last night, and I wrote this in our diaspora forum. I called board to tell him, how about we come together? We have the most votes in the combos and KMC. We try to visit every major town one evening, every major town once a day. We engage the youth. We talk to them as to why they should not vote for NPP, but vote for UDP. We have a lot of influence. So that is the, that is the best tool we have in our toolbox. If we can come together as the diaspora, use Pa Modu, Lamin uh, Sanyang, and others to advertise that we are going to Gunjur this coming Saturday. The diaspora is going. We all drive to Gunjur to meet the youth. If we sit with them, engage them, let them know why they should not be for NTP. But coming here 10 times, going home, that would not help. At this point in time, yes, consolidation is better, but we should expand. And how do we expand is for us to go out and engage the people. I am thinking that the very last week would be when we would all need to go back to our villages to mobilize people. But this, in this interim, these three weeks, let us use that to the fullest. Let's go to Birikama, let's go to Gunjur, let's go to Burfu. The diaspora sitting with the youth, telling them, educating them why they should not go to Adam Abaro. This is my suggestion, and I think we will talk about it more. But for today, I'm here representing Kansas City. Kansas City is a city in two states, Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. And our effort to complement what is going on on the ground is 128,750 to the party leader. So that is what I have to present. I will tell my people in Kansas, well done, job well done. Those who are coming should be prepared. They should tie their belt that when they come, they have more work to do before December 4th. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Sidney, for that brilliant idea. Um, I would like to use this occasion to call up to, to call up all diaspora, those from the diaspora to meet here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, if you are from the diaspora and you are in the United States, please let's, uh, let us meet here tomorrow evening and uh, discuss some of the issues pertaining to this upcoming elections and how we can help. Now, I would like to call uh, our brothers from the Maryland area, we have Sidi Kumala, who is the deputy chairperson of that chapter, to bring in their presentation.
And we believe UDP is one of the most promising and political party delivering the wishes of the Gambian people. So during the crucial expenditure and the financial needs with regards to the campaign activity and the election, the UDP diaspora committee thought it is wise to set an ambition, a goal, which each chapter should contribute dollars each. Collectively to reduce the fund borings of the UDP political campaign. And Maryland is a newly established chapter. Less than two years ago, we established this chapter on, with the leadership of uh, Isa Dewara as the chairman of the chapter, and then I'm the deputized. So we have a 300,000 for our 300 contribution for the campaign 2021 election. So here is the one. Now, probably most of you don't know Jenna Baba. Jenna Baba is 
what was it? who was behind and uh, I like to say the Jami who were behind the idea of uh, UDP Sweden chapter. And uh, since it's been very, very uh, cooperative, very working tirelessly over the years um, uh, to help the party in their activities. So, like again, I want to thank you. And uh, on behalf of the Swedish chapter, I have Geneva uh, and uh, Alexis to so make their presentation. Thank you very much Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Excellency, congratulations on your nomination I would like to say I think I was the one before speech was always called in my presence that was many years ago Alhamdulillah, I mean, I think we are working on that goal. But um, before saying anything, let me decide a surah here, which I think is very important. Awuju billahi mina shaitani rajeeni. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Alam nashra laka sadak wa wada ana anka wizra. Alladhi anka da zahara wa da. A surah of resilience, a surah of not losing hope. When it is dark and there is no sign of light in the tunnel, that you sit down and you say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I surrender to you. I surrender myself to you. Hasbunallah wa al wakil and Allah will show you the way. You have had sabbat. You've been an inspiration to me and many others. You've been resilient, you've been patient, when it was very hard, when it was very trying, and today you even mentioned fast never try. On that stand up, that was a defining moment in Gambian history. He said, Nibela Karala, Mena Karala, Manta Hani Kempel. That was your exact words. Thank you very much. Today I feel honored, I feel humbled to be here. This is historic. To be part of this group of people who are here to share this beautiful joy with you. And inshallah, inshallah, mafo ala koma. Inshallah, this is the road until we take it to State House. One of the finest, one of the finest sons of Africa, called Amir Kabral, just in the south here. In his book, Unity and Struggle, when, when they were talking about the Portuguese struggle, the Guinea-Bissauian people struggle in Guinea-Bissau against Portuguese imperialism, he was explaining, he said, no matter how hot the water from the well, it can never cook your rice. And he said, rice is never cooked from the outside of a pot. What does this mean? It means any struggle, it has to be within the country. But in our diaspora context, Amilka Cabral said, despite all of that, you need firewood. You need the simple for the pot to stand on. That is, you need outside help, outside solidarity. And that is where the diaspora comes in. So, once again, I thank everybody here. The efforts of the UDP Sweden has always been collective to inspire people to join the UDP. UDP Sweden started, then UDP Finland followed, Norway came, and just recently, very recently, UDP Denmark. And the task that we had, we were tasked by the UDP executive that every chapter should present $300,000. And we did the fundraising, all the clusters, excluding Denmark. And the first presentation we did was $300,000. There was a second presentation, which was also $300,000. There was another presentation, which was $100,000. And today, the last fundraising we did was in Sweden. But here we are presenting in the collective spirit that is Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, 